Hi and Assalamualaikum. I'm Dr. Yana. I hope everyone is in good condition. Well, considering the current situation pertaining to the spread of COVID-19, we will be having our lecture fully online. So previously in Chapter 4, Application of Differentiation, we have learned about equation of tangent and normal, how to find relative maximum and minimum using the first derivative, and so do the inflection, how to find the inflection point. So um, for this week, we're going to learn about um, this, which is method two, using second derivative test. So let's see the first example. Now you need to find the relative maximum and the inflection inflection points of given this function fx equal to x cubed minus 3x squared and then you need to sketch the graph so first we know that we have to start with the first derivative so you have to differentiate this function then you will get this 3x squared minus 6x then this equation is actually equal to zero uh, in order for us to find the critical values. So after this equal to 0, then you get x equal to 0 and x equal to 2. So this will be your critical values. Then by using the second derivative test, we will have f double prime x equal to 6x minus 6. So this is after we differentiate uh, after the second derivative. So now we have to substitute our value of x since we already knew that our x value equal to 0 and x value equal to 2. First, we need to dis, uh, substitute x equal to 0 into the second derivative. So you get negative 6, which is negative 6 less than 0. So this will be a maximum point or relative maximum. But now you only have x value. Uh, so you will need y value in order for you to uh, determine the point. So we have x equal to 0. Now you have to substitute x equal to 0 into f, the f function, not this one, to the f function. Then you will get your y equal to zero so this is complete you have x and y so it become a point so you have a point over here which is zero zero this is known as a relative maximum how do you know it is a relative maximum from this you have you have it less than zero so this indicate this indicate that it is a relative maximum next uh, finish with x equal to 0. Next, you have to substitute x equal to 2 into this function. So now when we substitute x equal to 2 into the second derivative, you will get the answer equal to 6, where 6 is greater than 0, which means that uh, this is going to be your relative minimum. But now you only have x value equal to 2. So you have to find the y value. So you have to substitute the x into the f function, the original f function. Then you will get y equal to negative 4. So now you have a point x equal to 2, y equal to negative 4. So this point going to be your relative minimum. So remember two things. When you have uh, when you already substitute the value into the second derivative function, when you have the less than zero value, that indicates that you're going to have a relative maximum. When it is greater than zero, that indicates a relative minimum. After we find our relative maximum and relative minimum, now we're going to find the inflection point. So how do we find inflection point? Remember, using the second derivative equal it to zero. So um, the second derivative is 6x minus 6 equal to zero. So you will get x equal to 1 
only one value. So when x equal to 1, therefore your y will be equal to negative 2. Okay, how do I get this value y equal to negative 2 is from substitution. You substitute x equal to 1 into the f function. Again, into the f function, not this. Okay, then you will have the inflection, the, sorry, the inflection point is 1, negative 2. So next, you're going to determine the concavity. So we know that our interval start from 0 and end with 2. How do I know that? Through this, the first x values you found or the critical values. So this is going to be the interval start from 0 and end with 2. But in the middle, you will have 1 over here since we have this from the, from the inflection point. So you will have start with 0 until 1, then close bracket, and then we start again with new interval 1 until 2. Okay, now you already have two intervals. You're going to have uh, to substitute any value within this interval. Let's say I pick 0 0.5 for this value because 0 0.5 is in between or within this range. Okay, and here I pick 1.5 uh, because 1.5 within this range. So now when you have this value, ran any random value here, you're going to substitute this value into the F double prime, this one. Since we're going to find the sign of f double prime x. So when we substitute this 0 0.5 into this function, 6x minus 6, you will get negative value. And the other one, when you substitute 1.5 into the f double prime function, you will get positive value. Which then we can conclude that the from here we have negative, means that your uh, the concavity of the curve uh, is downward for this. For this interval, it's going to be concave downward. So concave downward look like this. And for this one, since it is positive, you're going to have concave upwards. So it's going to be like this. So can you imagine your graph now? We have quite a little bit of hints over here. This one and this one okay also uh, negative sorry so one negative two is an inflection point to find interception point uh, is when x equal to zero y equal to zero interception point mean the pintasan pintasan of paxi y okay now you have inflection point and you already found the concavity. How does it look like? Now we're going to draw or sketch your curve, uh, sketch the graph. Okay, so this is how the graph will look like. If you refer back to the one with uh, in the table, it's quite similar, right? Here, it's going upward and then it's going like that. So this is the one. So 0, 0 will be the pintasan paxi y or the interception point over here. When you substitute x equal to 0, you will also get your y equal to 0. And the inflection point is somewhere around here. Since it is 1, negative 2. So the inflection point is over here. Inflection point means where the curve start to uh, change and then uh, here is the relative minimum this is the relative minimum point and this is the relative maximum point let's see the next example find the relative extremum and the inflection points of this function relative extremum mean you need to find whether it are both relative maximum and relative minimum. Okay, first thing you need to do is to differentiate this function. So after you differentiate this, you will get this. So 
I, uh, we know that in order to find the critical values, you have to equal this to 0. The first derivative must be equal to 0. So we have this equal to 0. Then you get x equal to 0, x equal to negative 1, and 1. This one you can solve it using calculators, using the equation function, the quadratic. Okay, okay then... So we already found our critical values. Next, by using second derivative test, so we have our first uh, original function. Then we differentiate the first. Uh, we differentiate it first to get our critical values. Then we differentiate it again. To ha so we have it this one. So now. Uh, when x equal to 0, you substitute x equal to 0 into this second function. Because we have these three values. So you're going to substitute each of it into this. So the first one, let's substitute x equal to 0 into this. Then you will get f double prime x equal to 0. So we can say that no conclusion can be met. So for this, because we have x equal to 0, f double prime also equal to 0. Now let's test for the x equal to negative 1 and x equal to 1. So when x equal to negative 1, we substitute this value into the f double prime, you will get negative 30. When negative 30 is less than 0. So this indicates that you're going to have a maximum, relative maximum. So um, then we already have x value equal to negative 1. You, of course, you're going to find what is your y value, right? So negative 1, you substitute into the f function. Substitute into the f function, you will get 2. So it's a point now. You have negative 1, 2. This point is your relative maximum. Okay. Then, we're going to test for x equal to 1. So again, x equal to 1, you substitute into the second derivative, then you get 30, where 30 is greater than 0, which indicates that you're going to have relative minimum. So, now you only have x values, you're going to find the y value. So substitute uh, x equal to 1 into your f function, so you get negative 2. So this point, 1, negative 2, indicate your relative minimum. So now you have found your relative maximum and relative minimum. Next step is to find the inflection point. So how to find the inflection point? We find, this first, uh, sorry, we find the second derivative and then equal it to 0. So you have these values, x equal to 0 and x equal to half. So you're going to have two inflection points since you have two x values. So um, since we have these values, x equal to 0, x equal to half, let's check for the concavity. So we have this interval start from negative 1. Why do we start with negative 1 not instead of negative infinity? Because if you refer back from this, the stationary value uh, from the critical values you have found earlier, we have three values of x, which is 0, negative 1, and 1. So pick the, the smallest value, which is negative 1. So neg we will start with negative 1. Negative 1 until 0. And then close bracket, and then we, st we start with a new one, 0 until half. Where does this half come from? Here, from the inflection point you found just now. So we're going to add half in here, and then close bracket, and then we start a new interval, start with half until 1 enough until 1 because if we refer back this 1 is the larger value largest values 
So stop until one. So now you have three interval, three intervals. Now you're going to find the value of x. Pick any value within this uh, interval, and within this interval, I pick. Let's say I pick negative 0.5 because it's in this interval, and negative. Uh, sorry, 0.25 also in this interval, and 0.75 also in this interval. So, um. We already have our uh, value of x, so you're going to substitute these values of x into the uh, f double prime function, the second derivative. So you get, for this interval, you're going to have positive answer. And for this interval, you have negative, and this interval, you have positive. Which indicate that for positive, indicate that it concave, concave upward, like this. And negative indicate concave downward and again positive you have concave concave upward so from here you can imagine how you how your graph look like actually from this curve okay since we already have our inflection uh, point the x only the x values remember you need to find the y values for this so when x equal to 0, x equal to 0, we substitute into the f function, you get 0. And then the second one, when x equal to half, you substitute again into the f function, you get 17 over 32. So you have two points now, this one and this one. We can sketch our graph. So these are the inflection points we found just now. So uh, of course you need to find the interception point where where does this curve pintas the y axis? Okay. So when x equal to zero, y equal to zero over here. Uh, the graph or the curve pintas back c y in here. So. For the curve sketching, let's refer to the previous table we uh, we found. Okay, let's see from negative one until zero, this area, right? This area. So you're going to have a little bit of concave downward. And then over here, from zero until half, here zero until half, you're going to have a little bit of downward. Downward, you see over here, downward, a slight downward. And then we have concave upward, starting from half, over here half until one. It's concave upward. So this is how your graph look like. And don't forget to label your graph. Where your relative maximum, where your relative minimum, where your uh, interception point, where your inflection point over here. Okay. You might want to try the exercise on your own, so please try it. Otherwise, you... You won't know whether you can do it or not. Next is to find the relative extremum using the second derivative test. Second derivative test can determine the maximum and minimum values of a function. So this is basically what we have learned previously or what we have used uh, before. Let's see. Let's uh, if f prime c or the first derivative equal of c equal to zero then the second derivative of c greater than zero then f has local minimum at c so remember if greater than zero that will be minimum if you have less than zero over here that the second derivative less than zero then you will have local maximum if f prime c equal to zero and f double prime c also equal to zero then the test fell it is inconclusive uh, so this is quite um, interesting uh, and it's easier to remember if you have the
the first derivative equal to zero, also when the second derivative also equal to zero, then we consider this test fail. It is inconclusive. Thus, the first derivative test is used only when this thing happen. Okay, let's see example. By using the second derivative test, find the relative extremum of this function. So first, you need to find the relat uh, the critical values. You, how do you find critical values? We do the first derivative. So from f here, you differentiate, you get this. Then from here, you can straight away using calculator to find the x value. Um, uh, of course, of course, the f prime x you're going to equal it to zero. Then only you can find, uh, then only you can find your x. So you have two x values, x equal to negative two and four. So these are the critical numbers or the critical values. To determine the relative extremum, the second derivative is used. Okay, then here is the first derivative. So you're going to differentiate it again, then you get this part. So after you have this part, you're going to substitute the x values you have just now. We have two x values, which is negative 2 and negative 4. Uh, the first one, when x equal to negative 2, your f double prime x equal to negative 8. You substitute the x value into this, you get negative 18, sorry, negative 18, which is less than 0. And the other one, x equal to negative 4, we substitute into this, you get 18, which is greater than 0. One is less than 0, one is greater than 0. Then, um, you only have x values. Of course, you're going to find the y values, right? So again, you substitute the x value into the f function f function then you get 60 so now you have a complete point also with this you substitute the uh, four val uh, value into the function you get this one so you have two points now but remember right you have here less than zero greater than zero so if we recall back to the uh, statement given previously you will have local minimum when your second derivative of c greater than zero. And you will have local maximum when you have second derivative less than zero. So we can conclude that uh, by the second derivative test, point negative 260 is a relative maximum. Why is it relative maximum? Negative 2 and 60. Because it is less than zero. And the second one for point x negative 4 and negative 48, um, you have over here greater than 0, which means you will have local minimum, or we can say it as a relative minimum. Example 2 by using the second derivative test, find the relative extremum of this function. So like usual, you're going to find the first derivative, which is this, and then you're going to equal the first derivative into zero, equal it with zero, then you have your x values, which are also known as your critical values. So we have x equal to zero and x equal to three, and then you're going to find the second derivative. So from the second derivative, you will have um, x equal to, zero and when x equal to zero f double prime x equal to zero you just check it back uh, when you have this x value substitute it in you substitute this value into this the second derivative and remember when you get this also equal to zero the test fell it is inconclusive thus the first derivative is use because both the first derivative and the second derivative equal to zero so the test fell so the first derivative is u let's see over here when the first derivative equal to zero we have two values which are x equal to zero and x x equal to three these are your critical values so we're going to have our um, intervals start 
from negative infinity until zero and then and then start with the new one zero until three okay then you're going to find any value of x and let's say negative one and here one substitute into the f prime not f prime not the f double prime this time we're going to use the first derivative because the second derivative mentioned uh, just the second derivative previously we consider it is fell we consider the test as fell so you're going to use first derivative so now you have negative when you substitute negative one into the f prime function f prime function you have decrease and also this one also decrease hence the first derivative test shows f does not have a relative extremum at x equal to zero okay that one is for x equal to zero how about x equal to three at x equal to three your f double prime x you get 36 which is greater than zero so you know that when you have greater than zero it's going to be local minimum from here when you have f double prime greater than zero you have local minimum so you're going to have now you have x you're going to find the y value so you, you substitute this x value into the f function f function remember not the f double prime always substitute into the f function so you get the y value so this is the point so this point three negative twenty seven is a relative minimum. Only one we, we only have one relative minimum. We don't have the relative maximum because the x equal to zero we don't have a relative extremum. No no um relative minimum not also the relative maximum so finish with um, relative maximum relative minimum inflection point and now we're going to solve optimization problems it's quite related with the one you have learned it's just that this time around you will have a problem to solve so basically there are, there will be five steps five steps uh, for solving uh, for solving optimum problem so the first step is to identify the variable for uh, to be maximized or minimized say variable y you need to identify the variable first the second step is to express y into a single variable function say y equal to fx then the third step you're going to solve for f prime x equal to zero remember this part this is how you're going to find your x values right your critical x value and the first derivative equal to zero and then the fourth step verify the solution of f prime x equal to zero by the second derivative okay and last step get the optimum value y equal to fx if it is required so this is example one you have been asked to design a one liter oil can shape like a right circular cylinder so you have this can and you need to design a one liter oil a one liter oil can shape like this this is a circular cylinder so what dimension will use the least material yang menggunakan paling kurang material dimensi apa yang menggunakan paling kurang material so we know that uh, circular uh, cylinder is like this and you will have the 2r or the radius and then over here you have the height tinggi dia so for the solution volume of can uh, so this for this problem you will need to remember or recall whatever you have learned in your uh, during your SPM 
so you need to know what is the formula for volume for the cylinder of course otherwise you can't start so volume of can or indicate by capital V equal to pi r square h pi r square h and it equal to 1000 1000 how do i know it's 1000 because 1 liter 1 liter equal to 1000 1, ml so it's equal to 1000 so now h equal to we we refresh ataupun kita susun balik the h so you only have h over here the rest you're going to bring it on the other side so you have this single h h equal to 1000 divided by pi r square because this pi r square you bring it over here so you know that the height will be this value then we also know that surface area of can, surface area ataupun permukaan tin itu adalah also this formula is what you have learned previously uh, during your SPM. So you need to recall or you need to google it. Okay, so this is the formula for area for cylinder and this is volume for cylinder. So, you, you will have 2 pi r square plus 2000 over r. Why is it 2000? Because you have two surface over here. You have uh, dua permukaan bulat. Dekat atas ni satu. Dekat bawah lagi satu. Uh, tin, permukaan tin dekat atas satu. Dekat bawah lagi satu. So, you have 2000 over r. Then, you will have dA over dr why is it da over dr because you have a over here and r over here so we will differentiate the a with respect to r you have over here so that's why you have da over dr so you have uh, then you then you can differentiate so slowly we differentiate this two when we differentiate two pi r square two in up here you're going to Multiply with 2 over here. So you get 4. 4 pi r. So pi is a constant. Just leave it here. Pi. And r square just now minus 1. So you get r. Minus 2000 over r square. This one because you already differentiate it. Yeah, so you get this. Okay. Then you will have your critical point or your critical values. So this is actually the third step da over dr you going what you have found in here you're going to equal it with zero so it's going to be like this da over dr equal to zero this is what the one we have found so again you're going to rearrange or reconstruct your uh, equation so kita kembang kembangkan and susun semula then you get um Make your R on this side. Jadikan your R sebagai sing, uh, penyebut lah dekat sini. So, you will have R cube equal to 5000 over pi. This one after you rearrange. You bawa pindah-pindah. Pindah-pindahkan dia. Then you get R cube 5 equal to 500 over pi. So, the R will be punca kuasa 3. This thing. Which is, you can calculate it using calculator. Then you get it approximately 5.42 the r r here is your radius uh, radius okay radius or jejari uh, jejari so you get your r or radius equal to 5.42 radius is only start from here until here half of it radius and your height will be 1000 over this Okay. This is from the one, the previous one we have found earlier. So you just substitute the value of R inside. So you get 10.84. So this is the height, the tinggi. You already found the tinggi and the radius, uh, the jejari. So that is the values 
that going to help you uh, build the can with the least material. Now let's move on to example two. Um, an open top box is to be met by cutting small congruent squares from the corners of a 12 cm by 12 cm sheet of tea, tin and bending up the sides. How large should the squares cut from the corners be to make the volume of box maximum? maximum? So uh, basically what you have here is you're going to build an open top box satu kotak yang mana uh, permukaan atas dia terbuka open top box and then you um, by cutting small congruent square congruent square mean segi empat sama yang mana dia punya corner adalah 12 cm time 12 cm ni adalah 12 cm lah so you're going to cut it into small small piece of 12 12 12 cm ok so, uh, dekat sini soalan mahu How large should the square cut from the corners? Ha, berapa besar the square Dekat tepi ni, dekat bucu ni Yang patut dipotong To make the volume of box maximum Sebab lagi besar kita potong ni Bila kita tegakkan kotak ni Ni macam kita buat apa? Uh, kotak DIY so, bila kita lagi besar, kita potong dekat tepi ni means lagi lagi dalam uh, kita punya kotak. So, solution. We have V volume equal to X times 12 minus 2X times 12 minus 2X. Okay. Uh, volume adalah untuk ni uh, for this box. You have X, X over here. Bila kita tegakkan dia kan, bila kita lipat untuk jadikan box, you have X. Uh, Seolah-olah so X ni adalah dia punya tinggi lah kalau kita lipat kan. X and then permukaan CC dia adalah 12 minus 2X. Uh, kenapa minus, ni kan asalnya 12. Kenapa 12 minus 2X? Sebab uh, originally this is 12 Di sini ada X. Di sini pun ada X. So, ada 2X. That's why kita minus 12 minus 2X. Sini ada X, sini ada X. So, minus 2X. Okay, itu baru bucu sebelah sini. How about bucu sebelah sini pula? Uh, bukan bucu, sorry. Side. Yang permukaan sebelah sini pula. So, uh, the other sides you will have the same. 12 minus 2X. The originally, this is 12. Over here, x. Over here, x. So, you have 12 minus 2x. So, that's why you have this. Okay, then you need to expand this. Kembangkan dia. So, you will get this. Now, you have v, you get x. So, you can you differentiate it? Yes. We will differentiate dv over dx. Differentiate v with respect to x over here. So, you get this part. Again, using the first derivative, equal the equal it with zero. So this whole thing going to be equal to zero. Again, you're going to find uh, you're going to find your x values. So you have two x values, x equal to two and x equal to six over here. So next. From this, you already found the first derivative. You're going to find the second derivative. The second derivative, you, again, you differentiate this, you get this. So, you have uh, two values of x previously. x equal to 6 and x equal to 2. When x equal to 6, you, uh, you substitute this value into this. So, you will get greater than 0. The value will be greater than 0. And which is greater than zero mean you will have v is minimum. When again, 
you have x equal to 2 substitute into this value you will get less than 0 which indicate that v is sorry v is maximum so the area of each squares to be cut from the corners is 2 times 2 equal to 4 cm how do i know 2 times 2 equal to 4 cm because this instead of using 6 i you instead of using x equal to 6 i choose x equal to 2 because this one will bring you to maximum v um, you will get from this value of x equal to 2 you will get the maximum volume see and this one we didn't choose this one x equal to 6 because your v going to have your volume going to be minimum so choose this one the maximum so that's why the area of each square to be cut from the box or from the corner is 2 times 2 the x value x value to adalah 2 equal to 4 cm that's it okay you might want to try this exercise also quite similar with the one with the second example Okay, you see, you have add centimeter and then over here you get x, you get x, so it's going to be add minus 2x and how about this? This is going to be 3 minus 2x, so it's quite similar. Please try it. Okay, as I promised, um, I will let you know a little bit of uh, detail for your midterm exam. Basically, your midterm will cover two chapters. Chapter 1, which is uh, function and relation, and chapter 2, limit and continuity. Um, suppose your midterm will be held on 26th of March 2020, next Thursday, uh, during our usual lecture time, 8 to 10 a.m. at DKP20. But for time being, I'm not really sure whether it can be uh, held or not. Uh, anyway, I will keep you updated with the information. Uh, for uh, okay, for chapter one, uh, what you can um, guess is that in chapter one you have learned about uh, various of function, and of course composite function, inverse function is a must, and you need to find you need to know how to find the domain and the range for the function. Uh, for example, how given a long function, how do you find the the range and the domain so we have a few um, various type of function you have ln exponent and so on so uh, it will be one of that and okay and of course in chapter one i will need you to draw a graph don't worry not really hard not really easy as well uh so so <laughs> okay uh it's uh, you need to draw a fun uh you need to sketch a function okay so don't forget to label your graph completely uh, where your x axis where your y axis and where your domain and your range okay so that is for chapter one i'll give more in the next video for chapter two so bear with me thank you